Zangpo, a warm welcome to Bhutan This Week. I am Samson Dolker. Our top stories this week. His Majesty the King grants the to appoint the Nganglam MP Karma Dorji as one of the cabinet ministers. Children aged between 12 and 17 to be vaccinated against COVID-19 from Tuesday. And internet connectivity, the biggest impediment to the new normal curriculum. Now the news in detail. His Majesty the King granted the to formally appoint a new minister to the cabinet as well as government secretaries and Zimpiwom to the office of the Gilpo Zimpin. Karma Dorji, Member of Parliament from Nganglam constituency, was appointed as the Labour and Human Resources Minister. The incumbent Labour Minister, Ugin Dorji, has been appointed to the Ministry of Home and Cultural Affairs. The new Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests is Tilenamgil. He was serving as the Secretary of the Gross National Happiness Commission. Kinga Dagpa, who was serving as Director General of the Royal Education Council, is the new Secretary General of the National Council. Sonam Tille, who is working in the Cabinet Secretariat as the Chief Administration Officer, was appointed to the office of the Gepi Zimpe as Zimpe Um. His Majesty the King also granted promotions to 11 officers of the Royal Bhutan Army, one officer of the Royal Bodyguards, and seven officers of the Royal Bhutan Police. The officers were promoted from the rank of Lieutenant Colonel to the rank of Colonel. Sunam Pem for BBS News. The European Union committed 31 million euros to Bhutan for the next EU programming period, which begins from 2021 to 2027. According to the Gross National Happiness Commission's secretary, other development partners also short their assistance. The commitment was formally announced during the 15th roundtable meeting. The EU support committed is regardless of the country's graduation from the least developed countries category in 2023. With them, we have this uh, 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 five-year cooperation, which actually officially it concludes in 2020. But some of the activities are still uh, ongoing. So one major announcement was formally that for our next, irrespective of our graduation uh, status, um, European Union, EU will continue support, supporting Bhutan. And we have already started working in, in terms of our next phase of support, which will go on from 2021 till 2027. The secretary added that Bhutan Trust Fund for Environmental Conservation has also committed 1.5 million US dollars. Besides, the Asian Development Bank has already committed more than 300 million dollars. The development partners asked Bhutan to focus on the recovery of the economy from the pandemic. Because all the countries are impacted, so they've asked us to focus on our recovery, one. And the second important thing is everybody's aware that this is our last mile plan. Mm -hmm. This is the last plan as an LDC country. And so when we graduate, um, then how do we graduate in a sustainable manner? Uh, it's not just sufficient to graduate, but to be able to graduate sustainably and to at least, if not go higher, at least to maintain the middle income status. The government allocated 4 billion newton for COVID-19 related activities in the last financial year. Similarly, 3 billion newton is allocated this financial year. Sunam Pem for BBS News. The Health Ministry will roll out the second dose of COVID vaccination for children aged between 12 and 17 from Tuesday. After the mass vaccination, Bhutan would have vaccinated more than 80% of its population, meaning at the end of the vaccination, Bhutan will achieve herd immunity. Earlier, the government had said the children in this age group would be given the second dose in the first week of October. However, the date has been rescheduled due to the availability of vaccines. Those who have received first dose will be getting the second dose Pfizer. And those who have not received the vaccine, then we are going to roll out a first dose at the same time. So school will be, uh, vaccine will be school-based. So vaccinator from respective health centre will go to the schools and they will be vaccinated in the schools. More than 59,000 children in 13 high-risk districts received their first dose recently. Since we are providing the second dose, the Pfizer for the, uh, the children who have received the Moderna dose, I think it's the same because both are messenger uh, RNA vaccine. So interchangeable is recommended. So, so there's uh, no, no need of any concern 
as far as we, we, uh, we, we know, technically. And also, uh, the, those who have received the Pfizer, of course, they will get the Pfizer. There are about 75,000 children in this age group, and only about 16,000 did not receive the first dose. Meanwhile, Bhutan purchased nearly 200,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, the largest consignment of the vaccine so far. Kim Zhang Hadden, BBS News. Now, Finsoling Town, considered the country's commercial hub, is at its lowest today. Frequent lockdowns and other challenges due to community outbreaks of COVID-19 have left the businesses in the region severely affected. Many have moved to other places, and for those who stayed back, survival has become a struggle. After several months under lockdown, Funzoling Town is slowly springing back to life once again. However, for the business community, the road to recovery seems long and tough. 28-year-old Sonam Swing runs a hair salon. He says business has been bleak since he reopened his shop. Before the pandemic struck, he would earn at least about 3,000 yatam in a day. But now, he says, he gets very few customers. Sonam is yet to pay his shop's rent for the past four months. Earlier, there were many people coming for haircut. We even had to make token system to control the crowd. These days, we don't get many customers. It is the same for almost all small business owners in the community. My house owner didn't waive off the house rent. He asked me to vacate since he wanted to start his own business. It is challenging since we have to pay the rents while the customers visiting us is very less. People say they are now without any option and are hoping for the government to help out. The Prime Minister during a recent press conference said people in Funzoling should get bank loans if they are struggling with their businesses. For those who are severely affected and cannot afford to meet ends, we have His Majesty's Relief Kidu. The Kidu has benefited many people until now. He added that although the government will support them, people now need to come up with new ideas to keep their businesses afloat. With over 92% of Funzoling's population above 12 years fully vaccinated, the town may not have to undergo lockdowns like in the past. For Sonam Penjo in Funzoling, Kelzang Choten for BBS News. The Education Ministry's new normal curriculum from this academic session has been one of the biggest reforms in ages in the education system. Using ICT infrastructure, the new curriculum aims to go beyond textbooks and classrooms and also maintain uninterrupted teaching and learning. However, the change is not without shortcomings. Lungten Zampa Middle Secondary School in Thimphu has almost all the necessary facilities to implement the new normal curriculum, except for a better internet facility. And so, the functioning of the school hasn't changed much. In our school, the internet speed is 15 MB. Compared to others, it is considered better. However, about 37 sections of students from class 7 to 10 use it, and this slows down the speed. We need a faster internet connection. We need a smart TV to show the videos on YouTube. You know? So what happened in our school is we have been collecting, I've been contributing from my side also to buy a smart TV. So it works because usually I tell my students to use the data at home. And in remote schools, the condition is worse. Most schools do not have computer labs and poor or lack of internet connectivity aggravates the issue. For instance, in history, the, all the teachers they need to browse the internet and all the information they need to gather it from the internet and that's how I could see, especially history teacher there, having a tough time in managing their 
uh, classroom teaching. La. We would require more of digital resources like tabloids, laptops for children, smart, smart devices for children, la. and the internet connectivity and the infrastructure has to be in place. Now, textbook is only used as a reference, so we have no idea about what to learn and what not to. Moreover, we are not used to it and it will take time to understand that approach. The Department of Curriculum and Professional Development, erstwhile Royal Education Council, started developing the new curriculum in 2016. And the new system encourages online teaching and learning besides the regular teaching and learning experience. Whatever may be the situation, what we want is our children should become more creative, more innovative, so that when things don't work, our children have the ability to innovate something and do things differently and they should be able to succeed in their life. The new system will also facilitate uninterrupted lessons even during emergencies. However, without adequate facilities, most teachers say it is difficult to fully implement the new system. And most of the teachers, they teach using their own devices, like their own phones, as we don't have internet connectivity as such. So we are we're hoping that by the end of this 2021 academic session, we will be fully uh, assistized. I think teaching learning process under MNC will be wonderful, provided we have enough resources, especially the internet connection. Of the 15 billion newton the Education Ministry got this financial year, more than 150 million has been allocated for the Education Flagship Program, which supports ICT laboratory and procurement of computers, among others. However, going by the Education Minister, it might take years to fully equip every school with ICT facilities. Three years, five years down the line, I think our, our children will have all these gadgets. Our children will have all the ICT facilities right now. At least 60% of our uh, schools are being equipped with all these gadgets, but still 40% are there. So we have to work for that. The new normal curriculum was designed to empower learners with intellectual, social, behavior and digital skills. But for now, without the required facilities in place, the timing of its implementation remains questionable. For Karmawadi, Cheku for BBS News. The country's fragile food system was exposed when the country closed its border in March last year amid the pandemic. Many began hoarding food and supplies since the country imports almost everything. To address this issue, a two-day dialogue was held in Monga recently. Farmers continue to lose their crops to windstorms and flash floods every year. Achieving food self-sufficiency is a challenge. The meeting calls on the government to prepare for the impacts of climate change and address human-wildlife conflicts. It is also asking for a market for farmers during the pandemic. Uh, trying to basically uh, come together with all the sectors uh, in the Zonghak as well as the national level to know where we are standing and then how we can improve further uh, in the future so that we become uh, self-sufficient in the near future. We are identifying uh, bottlenecks uh, in the food system and exploring on the strategies and the solutions which can help address the issues in the food system. Regional dialogues will be held in four regions and a national dialogue this month in Thimpu will discuss further on the findings. It will then be presented at the UN Food System Summit by the end of this month. Apart from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests, we also have participants from other sectors including the health, education and private sectors. Through such dialogue, we are hopeful that we will come up with good resolutions which will be presented at the United Nations. The Chief Planning Officer also said that the Ministry is soon coming up with three cold storage facilities in Kangnung, Wandifoda and Sarpang. There are plans to construct 10 such facilities. The Ministry is also planning to come up with crop insurance scheme. For Salam Singh in Mongar, who came for BBS News. The Office of the Attorney General files a court case against the National Housing Development Corporation on charges of criminal nuisance. In April, 
A falling streetlight pole in Changjiji housing colony in Thimpu injured a 58-year-old woman. The woman has been using a wheelchair since the incident. The OAG submitted to the court that the corporation did not carry out proper maintenance and monitoring. The OAG said they should pay more than 4 million item to the woman as compensation, medical expenditure and for the loss of earning capacity. She earned by weaving at home. Now for more than three years now, the only hospital in Samdrup Jonker has been without a gynecologist. Pregnant women have to travel for hours towards Tashigang and Mongar. Recently, 24-year-old Kile Chodin from Dewatangyeo traveled to Mongar for a caesarean section. Back in 2017, she delivered her first child at the hospital in Dewatang. The hospital had a gynecologist then. However, the only gynecologist was transferred to Mongar in April of that year and it was never replaced. Kile Chodin says traveling especially for pregnant women is challenging. Studies also show that pregnant women should avoid long trips. The hospital provided an ambulance. Without an ambulance, it would be difficult for me to travel. Moreover, without any relatives in Mongar, we face other problems. We would be grateful if there is one gynecologist here. After the treatment, we have to arrange the transportation by ourselves. So, it is difficult for us as we have to travel in a taxi. The issue was also raised during the recent Dongkak Tsogdu. Meanwhile, the health minister Dishan Ongmo said the ministry is planning to send a gynecologist within this year. We enhance the services in each Zonghak every year. This year, we will be expanding the services in Bumtang, Chirang, Dewatang, Wangdi and Samsi. So this year, we will send a gynecologist and surgeon. Every month, more than five pregnant women in Samruk Jonkar visit the hospitals in Tashigang and Mongar. For Kilewanchu in Samruk Jonkar, Sringzam, PBS News. The most common reasons for not completing construction activities on time during the pandemic are labor shortage and unavailability of raw materials. However, in Pemagatsal's Denchi town, some landowners are not buying these excuses. They have been working hard to complete their building con constructions and the pandemic is not holding them back. But now they are worried that they will not get the basic amenities even if they complete the construction works early since other landowners have not started the construction works. About 10 businessmen started constructing buildings in Denchi town in 2019 after the district administration approved structures up to three-storey in the area. Today, half of them are about to finish the work. The owners are not rejoicing though. Instead, they are concerned about whether they will get the basic facilities such as water and electricity supply. Since only a few of us constructed houses here, I am not sure if the government will give the basic amenities. We are worried as we cannot accept or start a business without these facilities. We did not start the construction just like that. It was after the Zonghul approved it. Today, only 9 to 10 of us have constructed houses here. It is now for the Zonghul to decide whether to give the basic facilities or not. But we hope the Zonghul considers our hard work and comes to our assistance. The municipality should give water and electricity supply to those who have completed the constructions. For others, the connections can be given when their constructions are complete. We want to request this from the district administration. If the administration wants to give the facilities only when all the constructions are over, then it's of no use for us having started the constructions early. Moreover, we are not sure when the others will start their works. According to the district architect, the town will have all the facilities as planned.
We will continue to give them uh, the temporary water supply and the electricity. However, uh, we have plans to have water treatment plan which will be treating water and will be distributing this water plant. So it is in the water flagship program. Uh, we have proposal of having service stop where we'll have uh, electrical lines, telecommunication lines. So it will be constructed soon as per our uh, plans. The Zongkok identified 49 plots in Denchi town and started their allotment in 2016. So far, a little more than half of them have been distributed to the people. Fortune Dojin Bemagatsal, Tsring Dandup, BBS News. Although reports show that Bumtang has a 100% mobile network accessibility, not every area in the district enjoys full network coverage. Both B-Mobile and Tashisal users in Bumtang are upset with the network issues. Besides the remote areas, the network problem has started occurring in Bumtang town as well. The issue was discussed in the recent Zongkok Soktu. The number you are calling cannot be connected at the moment. Please try again later. If you are at Ura, this interceptor message is what you will hear often when you make a call. And the problem is not only with calls. Even the internet speed is painfully slow. In Ura, the network coverage, often deemed good, is only on paper. In reality, Tashisel and Bhutan Telecom's call service, as well as network speed, are poor. My customers are frustrated when they cannot connect to me while placing order for food. Moreover, it is inconvenient when customers want to make payments digitally. The situation is similar in several other places across the district. We got a new network tower after we complained to the Bhutan Telecom management about the network issues. However, the coverage has only worsened. Tashisal network coverage was good at Shinkar in the past, but after the B-Mobile tower was installed, the Tashisal network became hardly accessible. Likewise, there is a lot of network fluctuation in other Chuoks as well. Both the telecom companies have plans to address the issues by constructing new network towers. The new towers will be installed at Tomkar, Jamkar and Dikiling. Moreover, we have also upgraded seven existing towers. We are also working to improve the network connectivity in Ura Geok. The Georg administration has to submit us a list of places where there are issues. We will then conduct a survey as to how many households are affected and if a new tower has to be installed. According to Bhutan Telecom's manager, the network issue in Pumtang town is due to congestion caused by increase in mobile users. But with new network towers coming up, people can expect the issues to be addressed by this winter. Kipchu, BBS News, Pumtang. Well, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and stay safe.